Hi guys, it's Miss Simon. So I wanted to make this video today to help you guys out with science. So yesterday we continued learning about the biosphere. And remember the biosphere is anything and everything that is living, okay? We learned yesterday that anything that is alive is a member, is a part of the biosphere. When we think about that, the everything, there's many things that are a part of the biosphere. And I'm sure we can think of things that live in the geosphere, that live in the atmosphere, and that live in the hydrosphere that are also part of the biosphere. Also yesterday, remember we looked at that we categorize all of these different living things into things that we call kingdoms. And our four main kingdoms are animals, plants, bacteria and fungi and then we also learned about biomes and biomes are areas of the earth with similar climates and plants and animals that live there remember we talked about um biomes are good to, because it allows us to see where certain types of plants and animals live because plants and animals that live in the extreme cold in the north pole and the south pole are going to be different than plants and animals that live in like rainforests and grasslands areas all right, so today we are going to continue on learning about the biosphere. I'm going to really focus on how the biosphere is a connected sphere. The biosphere is responsible for connecting all of the spheres together. So I'm going to share my screen here. And remember, if I highlight it, make sure you put it down in your notes, please. All right, so we know <clears throat> the biosphere is known as Earth's connected system. So even though we have learned about the spheres separately, remember the geosphere is about land, the hydrosphere is about water, the atmosphere is about la uh, la um, ugh, sorry, air, and the biosphere is about life, okay? We've learned about them separately, but they are not separate at all, okay? They are actually very connected, okay? Each one kind of connects to each other, okay? So each portion has an effect on the others, okay? So the spheres, while listed separately, are far from separate. There is no distinct border or boundary between them. And this is a great visual, so I would include this in your notes because it really shows how they are connected. So every sphere has an effect on another sphere. Something that's going on in the geosphere is gonna affect the atmosphere. Something that's going on in the biosphere is gonna affect the hydrosphere, okay? And so on, they are all connected. Again, make sure you have this visual, guys. It's a very good visual to kind of see why and how they are connected. All right, moving on. So what do we mean by they're connected and they interact with each other, okay? So go ahead and put this down, sphere interactions. So interactions between different spheres impact life within the biosphere. So, so when something is happening between the atmosphere and the hydrosphere, it's going to affect life in some way, okay? When something is happening between the geosphere and the atmosphere, it's going to affect life in some way. Okay, so it's always affecting the biosphere. Interactions between different spheres impact life within the biosphere. These interactions are continuously occurring all over the planet during both the daytime and nighttime. So constantly these spheres, spheres are interacting with one another, okay, all of the time. Okay, so spheres are constantly interacting. And an example of this, okay, is if we look down here, when warm ocean waters transfer heat and moisture into the air, and it's met with spiraling winds, a hurricane is created, okay? So let's think about that. If we have warm ocean waters, that's our hydrosphere, and it's going into the air, and it's met with wind. Well, that's our atmosphere. So that hurricane is an interaction between the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. 
And I'm sure we can think about this, guys, because a hurricane obviously is going to affect the biosphere. It's going to affect life in some way. And land. Think about that. When a hurricane comes, okay, it knocks down many trees, okay, which are a part of the geosphere, okay? So just right there, you see how the hurricane affects the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere. So a hurricane is an interaction between the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. But actually, when we think about it, it connects all of the spheres together because every sphere is impacted. All right, moving on. So sphere interactions typically occur when the geosphere interacts with air, water, or light. Okay, these interactions move matter or energy from one sphere to the other. Okay, so typically, sphere interactions typically occur when the geosphere interacts with air, water, or light. So when we look at this picture, guys, what sphere interactions do we see, okay? We see land, obviously. So we see the geosphere, but what is the geosphere interacting with? Think about it. What's happening on this land right here? What other sphere is the geosphere interacting with? If you say biosphere, you are correct. Because as you can see, guys, <clears throat> sorry, as you can see, this land is growing crops, okay? And when we start growing crops, those are plants. Plants are alive. So just right here, you see the land interacting with the geosphere. That land, that geosphere is interacting with the biosphere. Now, there's many different sphere interactions, okay? And we're going to kind of work together on this slide to fill in other examples of interactions between spheres, okay? So when we look at this example of a volcano, a volcano is an interaction between the atmosphere and the geosphere because when we think about that, a volcano erupts, okay? So that is actually an earthquake that is underground that is happening on land that is erupting. And when it's happening, all of the smoke is going into the atmosphere. So the smoke is going into the atmosphere. Lava is coming on the land. So lava is affecting the geosphere. Okay, so we see a volcano is that interaction between the geosphere and the atmosphere. We have a hurricane, which we already talked about, is that interaction between the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. Okay, let's think about the geosphere and the hydrosphere. Okay, the geosphere and the hydrosphere, all right, I can think of an interaction between those two. Specifically, what I'm thinking of, guys, is a tsunami, okay, so a giant wave, okay. A tsunami is going to be an interaction between the hydrosphere and the geosphere, because think about it, when a tsunami comes, okay, it's coming from the water, and it's affecting land. Land gets flooded. It also affects the biosphere. Think about it, homes get destroyed. People get, um, people end up missing or dead. Okay, you have animals, plants get ruined. Okay, so a tsunami is an interaction between a geosphere and a hydrosphere. And also we can look at an interaction between the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. I'm sure you guys have heard before of something that we call acid rain, okay? Acid rain is rain that comes down, but it has chemicals in it, okay? So again, that hydrosphere, the water is coming down with acid, so it is affecting the atmosphere, okay? The water that is going back up into the clouds, okay, is full of chemicals, okay? So it's a, affecting acid rain is going to be an interaction between the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. And I'm sure we can think of other ways acid rain impacts both the geosphere 
and the biosphere, okay? Acid rain, that rain's going to go, go into lakes and rivers that animals are going to drink. So they're going to be impacted. That acid rain is going to fall and hit plants and mountains and things that are part of the geosphere. And that's going to be impacted. Okay. So again, we see how all of these spheres are connected. All right, guys, moving on. All right, so events in one sphere impact all the other spheres, okay? So Earth sphere interactions, go ahead and put that down. Events in one sphere impact all other spheres. And we just looked at that with some examples that we saw, okay? Specifically, let's look at this volcano again. The volcano is the event. Well, it's affecting the atmosphere because the volcano has smoke coming off of it that's going into the air. It's affecting the hydrosphere because that smoke is going to get into the clouds. And then when it rains, that rain is going to be dirty and impacted when it does rain. It's affecting the geosphere because that lava is coming out and going onto the land, okay? And it's affecting the biosphere because we think about it, guys. If a volcano erupts, animals are going to be affected. Plants are going to be affected, right? They're going to get destroyed. So we see how one event actually impacts all of the spheres. What type of interaction is occurring in the picture? The geosphere and the hydrosphere, the hydrosphere and the biosphere, the biosphere and the atmosphere, the atmosphere and the hydrosphere, or all of the above. Think about what we just talked about on the previous slide. Okay, if you said all of the above, you are correct. Because again, one interaction affects all of the spheres. All right, guys, that is where we are going to end for today. Okay, so um, please make sure you remember, okay, the biosphere is kind of the connected sphere. The biosphere connects all of the spheres together. And one event, one interaction actually has an impact in each and every sphere. Hope this video was helpful and I'll see you guys later. Bye.